very serious concerns. Thank you. I'm State Representative Frank Hornstein. I represent a district in Minneapolis, parts of downtown and southwest Minneapolis. I'm also the DFL lead on the Transportation Finance and Pol uh, Finance Committee, uh, and I also serve on the Policy Committee. So we have very serious concerns with this bill. Uh, I think it's chock full of gimmicks and alternative facts. The main gimmick is somehow that we can use general fund money to fund transportation long term. Uh, we need dedicated, stable, long term funding to address our gap. Uh, and this doesn't even address the need that we have in the state for roads and bridges and transit. It divides the state. Uh, there's a serious cut to metro transit, and that's the alternative fact. The fact is that the uh, invest money is not there. And um, so we are going to see serious cuts in our local transit service and uh, no expansion of transit ways whatsoever, including buses. Let's take the light rail issue aside. We have no growth in uh, bus rapid transit lines uh, uh, in the metro area at all. And uh, so the fact is uh, it divides the state, uh, taking money from schools and health care uh, to fund transportation is uh, not a long-term plan. It's not a vision. Uh, any, any deficit that comes up into the future, you can bet that this uh, $450 million that they're t uh, shifting from uh, the uh, general fund to transportation is going to be taken right away. So this does not provide any certainty. It doesn't help our road and bridge situation in greater Minnesota, uh, nor transit in greater Minnesota or the metro area. And seemed potentially open in the future to a constitutional amendment to dedicate these funds. Would you be supportive of that? Well, the problem is, is this is a significant chunk of general fund money that's going towards transportation. It's, uh, uh, you know, $450 million is significant. And so um, uh, we have, there's, there's better ways to fund roads and bridges. Uh, this is not the way to do it. And what do you think about a fair amount of this is through bonding? Um, what do you think about that part of it, exclusive of the, the general fund impact? What are oh, your yeah, thoughts it's, on it's, that? It's, it's, it's gimmickry to run up the credit card. Uh, there's a certain amount of uh, trunk highway money and, and general obligation bonding that we've traditionally used for transportation projects. But to rely on bonding and to rely on the general fund is simply not sustainable. It will not address our needs long term. And it's, it's a short-term gimmick. And uh, uh, Minnesotans correctly prioritize transportation, but not this way. This, this is not going to get the job done at all. So if the job isn't getting done, are we looking at another failure to pass a major transportation bill? I, seen Rachel, I certainly hope not. I went into this session thinking uh, there, we, that there were some avenues towards compromises. Uh, I presented a... Uh, uh, the governor's bill with some modifications as a potential compromise last week in committee. Uh, none of those ideas were taken in this bill. So uh, we have a long way to go uh, if we're going to reach uh, agreement. What are some of the funding uh, methods you'd like to see incorporated? Or, or well, ways? we, we uh, uh, have thought over the years that uh, uh, a very modest increase in the gas tax is the kind of long-term dedicated funding we need. Uh, there's been an increase in support for that over the years. Uh, uh, last year, even the speaker entertained license tab fee increase. Uh, that has been part of a proposal that the Chamber of Commerce and some labor groups have been uh, floating, and that is not in, at all in this bill. So um, we do think there are some uh, sources of new revenue that are out there that I hope we can all agree on, but that's not present in this bill, and I don't see any movement towards that, and I, I highly doubt we're going to see that on the House floor next week or in two weeks when this bill gets debated. Why isn't it appropriate to use some of this plus for the same? I mean, it serves a potentially gets you a one-time dose of money? and Because there's no, first of all, we're taking money away from vital needs. Uh, education and health care is almost three-quarters of our state budget. So where are we going to make up that money? Uh, secondly, uh, you know, our contractors, the folks that are doing the work, that are providing the jobs, uh, need some certainty. Uh, they can't simply have a little money here and a little money there. Uh, when we did the Corridors of Commerce program in 2013, we viewed that as a down payment. And uh, that uh, 
we would have a long-term sustainable funding source for that over many years. That has not taken place. So all of these corridors that Representative Torkelson are, is talking about will not receive the kind of support they need. And I want to let you know that we have our one of our great members of our committee here, uh, Representative Johnson, who's really monitored and tracked this Corridors of Commerce program over the years. He might be able to talk about that, too, if you have questions of him. Uh, so. Representative Horace, you were, we're hearing the uh, dissolution of CTIP cited as a reason for this legislature not to act in, uh, in a, a way to infuse more money into transit. Uh, what's your view of the dissolution of CTIP, and, and does that have the potential, if Hennepin County and Ramsey County respond, with higher sales taxes, uh, does it have the potential to ease some of the funding crisis that Metro Transit is facing? Well, CTIP, potentially, this uh, dissolution of CTIP can partly take care of the transitway issue. But we have a real problem with our local bus service. Seventy-five percent of the folks or more that use Metro Transit are local bus users and Metro Mobility. Metro Mobility is being cut and the local bus service is being cut. And our local bus service is not even being expanded. We have important bus rapid transit lines on the table that I th think have bipartisan support. Uh, downtown Minneapolis to Lakeville, downtown St. Paul to Woodbury. These aren't Democratic or Republican bus rapid transit lines. They're common sense bus rapid transit lines that have a lot of public support. Those aren't funded in this. So um, uh, while uh, the uh, other side will say, well, we just have issues with trains. Uh, they're not funding buses, and in fact, they're cutting them. Uh, the only bus service that they're funding are some uh, smaller suburban lines that, in fact, have the highest per passenger subsidy and lowest fare box recovery <laughs> rates in our region. So the successful line, the successful metro transit system is being slashed, and uh, that's just uh, uh, doesn't make sense at all. What about sure. Torkelson's argument that you're not stealing from the general fund in times of a surplus. Well, I, I can also have the, I, I would have our minority leader respond to this, but here's some phony math. If you're going to spend $1.4 billion in uh, primarily corporate tax giveaways, and then you're going to spend $400 million uh, or more in uh, general fund money for transportation, you've already exceeded the surplus. So I think, again, this is a little bit of phony math going on, but I, I would have the uh, majority lead, the minority leader uh, respond if she wanted to. Just one thing that I would say, and, and I think one reason we thought it was important, important to have Clark Johnson here is, you know, th there's um, an alternative fact that transit is a metro issue. Transit is a statewide issue. In every county in the state, we have needs to get people to places, people who can't drive, um, and people for whom driving is not economic. And so it's a really outdated view of the world, um, really surprisingly outdated view of the world that the Republicans are bringing forward in this transportation pro proposal. It is not a modern proposal. It is not a one Minnesota proposal. And it certainly leaves greater Minnesota in the dust because greater Minnesota needs investment in roads and bridges and transit more than anybody else. Uh, so it, it really, this proposal doesn't do the job for any part of the state. And I want to really emphasize that one Minnesota proposal uh, because, again, this is very divisive and is not moving the state forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.